Yeah, because we have to turn off the water main to the street. I remember. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. That's okay. So, Sterling, yeah. we have a Febco 850. This is called a double check valve. And it is for the irrigation line. There is our water meter there. Here's an isolation valve that turns off the water to the house. Then it converts into probably brass or galvanized piping here and stays in copper to the irrigation line. So right now it is still in the off position for the season. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to make sure that these test ports are closed, which they are. We're going to close this valve and we're going to open up this. So this is shutoff valve number one. This is shutoff valve number two. So we're going to open up this. And I don't know what the deal is outside, but let's carefully open this up and see what happens. Now it's pressurized. I was waiting to see if it was continuously running. Maybe like the, the plug that the irrigation guys take out in the winter is still out and it would be running continuously. You'd hear it running. Okay, okay so now the double check valve is pressurized and the water supply is still onto it. So we're gonna begin testing. New film. There we go. Okay. So what does this valve represent? What is this one called? Shut off valve number one. Shut off valve number two. And that's because the direction of flow is from the bottom up. If it was reversed, this would be shut off valve number one. And that would be shut off valve number two. Okay. Okay. This is test port number one, two, three, and four. With oh, me? Yes. Which one is shut off valve number one? Perfect. Okay. So the, one of the first steps um, when testing any backflow device, whether it's a double check valve, also known as a DCV, or an RPZ, which stands for reduced pressure zone, uh, before testing, we need to blow off test ports one, two, three, and four. Now, that's what it says in the manual, but we don't really need to blow off test port number one because we never use that. We're going to blow off test two, three, and four. We're going to make sure there's no debris stuck in there. So I'm just going to take this flat screwdriver. I'm going to put it into the valve. Okay. And then I'm going to slowly open this just to get some any debris in there. Just like that. See? A little bit. It's a little spitz. Spritz. See that? Okay. Now that they're all clear, I'm going to ho hook up my gauge test port adapters two test ports, two, three, and four. Now, and I'm gonna tighten them up with a little adjustable wrench. Okay. Next, we're gonna take the Watts TK9A. With a little bungee cord. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that they're all closed. A, B, and C. Okay. Now, back to my little closet here. I'm going to use this little bungee cord. I'm going to try to hang it somewhere. Maybe right there. Or maybe, you know what, let's tie it into the top of this meter header. Just so it's out of the way so we can see it as well at the same time. Okay, good? Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna to defer to the manual because I want you to learn step-by-step step the right way of doing this. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Here is the instructions for a double check valve test procedure. First thing we did was determine direction of flow, which is from the bottom to up, from uh, top to um, bottom to top. Next step, we're going to close shutoff valve number two to stop flow down down uh, downstream of the system. Okay, so let's just close shutoff valve number two. I don't know what that was, but nothing here. We have beeps. Okay. We already blew off test ports two, three, and four to eliminate any dirt or debris. So now we're gonna test check valve number one. We're gonna connect our high pressure hose to test cock number three. 
Okay. Now, if we look closely behind the sticker that the calibration company put on my gauge, you're going to see that high pressure is A. The low pressure is B and the bypass is C. So the step says we're going to connect the high pressure hose to test cock number three. Here's our high pressure hose, which is test port number three. This one. Excellent. So we're going to connect that to test port number three. And we're going to open test cock number three. Right. And now close shut off valve number one. No, we skipped a step, right? Five. Bleed high pressure hose. Open control valves A and B on the test kit. And when we're, when we're done bleeding it, we're going to close control valve B, leaving A open. So now let's get that bucket that we brought in here. I'll take it up here because right. it's probably easier. I'm going to put both those in there like that. Okay. So we're going to bleed the high pressure hose by opening A and B in the test kit. And once all that um we're done bleeding we're going to close b so remember this is a that's b so we're going to open up a we're going to open up b we're bleeding the air out of that we're going to close b right we'll close a uh, I didn't, I you want to pay attention no. okay we're going to close b okay. okay a b c next step what no, I was going to grab it. I got it. Gonna... All right. Now, we're going to note the line pressure gauge. We're going to do that on a separate test. I don't have a pressure gauge on my Watts TK9A. We're going to sh shut off. We're going to close shut off valve number one. Okay. The needle should stay pegged on the high side. The needle right there is staying pegged on the high side. If the needle drops, then shut off valve number two is faulty okay if the needle stays pegged on the high side we'll continue to the next step so now we're going to slowly open control valve b until the needle drops to two psid and then we're going to close b so let's close open up b until that needle drops to two psid and right there if the needle will not drop the two PSID, shut off valve number one is faulty, which would be that one, okay, because it's letting water pass through. If the needle holds at two PSID, continue to next step. Now it is holding at two PSID. Next step is we're gonna, number eight, we're gonna open test cock number two. The valve should stay hold, should stay hold at at least one PSID to pass. So if it drops below one PSID, it has failed. And that's what it says in red. If it drops below one PSID, the check valve is faulty and it fails. So now I'm going to take that screwdriver. I'm going to open up test port number two. Not really going to come out of there, okay. but we want to make sure that the needle does not drop below one. If it drops below one, it's failed. It dropped a hair, but we're above one PSID. So the check valve number one has passed. Now there's one more valve to test. We're going to close test port number two. We're going to close test port number three. We're going to open up shut off valve number one, re-energizing the valve. Now I'm going to take my high pressure hose. I'm going to hook it up to test port number four. I'm going to open up test port number four. Now we're going to bleed. We're going to do the same thing we just did with shut off valve number um Check valve number one, we're going to bleed air through A and B. Now we're going to close B. Needle should stay pegged on the high side. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to close shut off valve number one. Okay? Now we're going to slowly open B until it drops to 2 PSID. And we are right there. Okay? Now I'm opening up test port number three and it dropped a hair again so check valve number two also passed we're going to close test port number three we're going to close test port number four we're going to open up shut off valve number one 
and we're going to store water to the sprinkle system by opening up shutoff valve number two. Now, we, when we arrived here, shutoff, this was closed. Right. Right. Now, I already know this is pressurized. God forbid something freezes up again. I'm going to close one. I am going to leave two open. I am going to open up test port number four. And we're going to drain the water or the pressure from that line into the bucket. So now this is no longer under pressure. This is open. That's closed. So there's water to here. And yes, there may be some water in there. So if I open up this one and that one, it's unlikely to freeze. Okay? You're okay. Any questions? No. No? Okay. The device has passed testing and normally what we would restore water service. But because it, it was off when we got here, we're going to leave it off. We're going to update the service tag to today's date and write the device pass testing. Now, this Watts TK9A is a very expensive piece of equipment. We're going to make sure that we drain all the water out. We're going to open up A, B, and C. All that water is going to drain out of here. You need to protect it from any freezing conditions. Take the bucket, take that. Okay. And now we are done. Nope, nothing's left behind. The water's on, that's off. Okay.